Right, today we're going to talk about the Hankton Drug Organization, the biggest narcotics empire in the history of the Bayou, the Big Easy down in New Orleans. Uh, just last week, the entire uh, infrastructure of the organization was brought down in a, a giant racketeering and murder trial. They were all found guilty. Um, at the head of that trial was the kingpin himself, Wild Telly Hankton. Sitting next to him at, at the uh, defense table was his top hitman, a guy by the name of Walter Mooney Porter. Uh, both very, very dangerous and vicious individuals um, as evidenced by their criminal record over the last decade. On trial again for murder, Hankton is accused of running down Darnell Stewart on Claiborne Avenue in Central City and shooting him in the face. And he was known as the most wanted criminal in New Orleans area. And if we're going to, you know, clean up New Orleans, we've got to clean up all the crime. One eyewitness was murdered and another was shot 17 times and survived. He is expected to testify. Until something's done, the murders are continued and this we're losing to, I mean, basically we're losing a generation. In the early 1990s, it was started by uh, George Cup Hankton, Telly's older brother. Um, Telly and his cousins, uh, several of his cousins, uh, joined up uh, with Cup uh, around 94-ish when uh, Telly was uh, 18. And they ran the organization for uh, roughly 15 years. A very long run, a lot of violence, a lot of bloodshed. While Telly Hankton's mother was indicted uh, in the case when this case came down a couple years ago, um, Telly himself has been in prison uh, since around 2010, I believe, when he was indicted for a murder that was involved in a giant street war that erupted uh, in the Big Easy that was centerpiece in this racketeering trial. Uh, he's been locked up for about five years and uh, Mooney Porter has also been locked up on other charges related to a contract murder. So this conflict breaks out in around 2004. So the, the organization had been up and running for about 10 years, maybe 12 years, and you had a group of uh, Hankton organization lieutenants led by a guy by the name of Brian Pluck Broussard. Uh, Broussard's uh, top henchmen were guys by the name of Darnell, Derny Stewart, and uh, Jesse Tutu Reed. These were kind of a, a formidable threesome that broke off in, uh, in 2004 and started doing their own business. Telly Hankton and Mooney Porter killed Derny Stewart and Tutu Reed. Brian Pluck Broussard was shot but wasn't killed. Uh, the Derny Stewart and Reed murders were incredibly vicious and they were responses to Cup Hankton being murdered. Uh, the war broke out in around 04. In 2006, you had what was called the Center City Massacre, where prosecutors were pointing the finger at Telly Hankton for killing five young members of the Broussard uh, Stewart crew uh, in Center City, which is a district of New Orleans. Michael Anderson was accused of shooting five teens in Central City back in 2006, but federal prosecutors say he was not the one responsible. And instead, they're pointing the finger at Telly Hankton, a man who's been called the crime boss of New Orleans. It was dubbed the Central City Massacre. Five teens gunned down at the corner of Josephine and Daniil in June of 2006. The killings prompted then-Governor Kathleen Blanco to send the National Guard back to the city. Hankton was deemed New Orleans' most dangerous criminal by Mayor Mitch Landrieu and Police Chief Ronald Surpass back in 2011, running an alleged drug ring through Central City. In 2007, there were a series of shootings uh, which climaxed in December of that year with Cup Hankton being killed in front of a car wash. That spring of 2008 has got to be one of the most heinous murders ever uh, committed in the gangland uh, territory of the bayou. Uh, Telly Hankton and his cousin, Reese Hankton, were chasing Darnell Derny Stewart. They found him outside a club and began chasing him with their car. Murder Hankton is accused of running down Darnell Stewart on Claiborne Avenue in Central City and shooting him in the face. A car chase, Derny Stewart ended up crashing his car, getting on foot and uh, running away from the, uh, the Mustang that was being driven by Telly Hankton and Reese Hankton, they eventually caught up to Darnell Stewart and hit him with the car, sending him, uh, witnesses say, 10 feet in the air. Uh, came down to the ground, car came to a stop. Telly Hankton gets out of the car with a pistol, 
pistol whips Stewart in front of a group of people in front of a club called Jazz Daiquiri's and then unloads his clip into him at point blank range, killing him instantly. But the case has had a twisted past. One eyewitness was murdered and another was shot 17 times and survived. The owner of Jazz Daiquiri's, that club, was a witness to the killing and uh, testified in front of a grand jury was gonna testify at the 2011 trial, or did testify at the 2011 trial, but before that, Mooney Porter caught up to him and shot him 17 times to prevent that testimony. He survived and still testified. Well, 61-year-old Curtis Matthews was gunned down in front of the Jazz Daiquiri Lounge on Saturday night. He is the brother of John Matthews, who testified against Telly Hankton at his last trial. Mooney Porter goes and kills the owner of Jazz Daiquiri's brother as retaliation for the owner testifying. So this just got way out of hand. A ton of bodies dropping, just senseless murder. Tutu Reed lasted another year. Uh, in 2009, Tutu Reed was killed uh, by Mooney Porter and Telly Hankton on, on a porch in, uh, in New Orleans. They, they, they got out of a car and opened fire on him. Mooney Porter was known for being a two-fisted shooter, would come out with two automatic weapons, and his calling card were a lot of shell casings. Um, and they killed Tutu Reed, who had also been allegedly one of the people that had killed uh, Pluck Hankton. Uh, both, both Hankton was arrested in 2010, Porter was arrested in, uh, I believe, 2011. Uh, they were eventually uh, convicted of their murder, murder cases, and now they've just been convicted again last week of racketeering and additional murders. So an interesting aside in the story is, you know, everyone's heard of Cash Money Records. They're the face of uh, Southern hip hop in New Orleans. Uh, Baby Williams and Slim Williams, uh, they founded the label in the early 1990s. According to DEA documents, part of the startup for Cash Money was created by a cash influx provided by the Hanktons. Cup Hankton specifically was very close with Baby Williams. According to informants for the DEA, he provided them uh, part of a startup loan when, when this to Cash Money in the early, around 92 or 93. The bust didn't happen until 2010-ish. Uh, 2011 so you're talking about a, over a 15 year run for the Hankton boys in, in New Orleans uh, and in a lot of ways the uh, cash money records uh, ascent mirrored uh, the Hankton uh, uh, organization ascent by the late 90s early 2000s both groups were really clocking a lot of money a lot of power a lot of prestige uh, cash money records produced uh, they're obviously the, their, their biggest name is is Lil Wayne, one of the faces of of modern day hip hop. Um, and another interesting side note to this story was uh, when young when Lil Wayne started, he was a part of a uh, with a, I guess a, a mini super group in the late '90s called uh, the Hot Boys. And the Hot Boys were um, young Young Turk, Lil Wayne, uh, Juvenile, and BG. Now BG, which stands for Baby Gangster, his real name is Christopher Dorsey. He was allegedly a member of the Hankton organization after the, the arrest of BG in 2009 definitely raised some questions. I mean, he had already been implicated as, as being a, a drug runner, a, a drug dealer for the Hankton organization. But in the 09 arrest, uh, as I said, he's arrested, coming out of his girlfriend's house in an SUV. And in the SUV, he's with two reputed hitmen. They got uh, three automatic weapons with full jackets in them. It led to a lot of questions of and, and, and what, what, you know, what was going on here? What were they intending to do? And you know, BG got hit pretty hard. Uh, I believe he got a 14 year sentence. And uh, what's most interesting is about BG, uh, in addition to his um, alleged drug dealing activities, or drug dealing activities with the Hankin organization was that in the trial that was going on uh, through most of June into early July, uh, BG's name and his rap lyrics uh, were, were brought into evidence uh, BG, well, first of all, he was caught on a wiretap talking with Mooney Porter about uh, shootings, murders, and attempted murders. Uh, he was caught on a DEA wiretap talking to, you know, the main hitman of the Hankton organization. But uh, several of BG's rap lyrics actually made it into evidence at trial to um, go to Mooney Porter and Telly Hankton's uh, reputation of, 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 of violence and bloodshed. Uh, one of, I think, the, the most prominent lyric that was shown out there was a rap that uh, uh, a rap video Mooney Porter appeared in this video and uh, while while BG was rapping Mooney Porter was in the background and then at the very end one of his final lyrics 
uh, BG came in the video and put his arm around uh, Mooney Porter and alluded uh, in a rap lyric saying, um, you'll get hit 50 times when my nigga Mooney around, uh, alluding to uh, Mooney's reputation for unloading a ton of of ammunition and uh, shell casings. In fact, he was referencing specifically the Tutu Reed murder where they found 50 shell casings. So uh, the Hankin organization is no longer. They were convicted last week in a giant racketeering and murder case in New Orleans, but their legacy uh, of, of, of bloodshed, their legacy of wrecking havoc in the community obviously will last for a long time.